Okay, so we're going to make the um, the threads one inch long here. It's pretty much arbitrary. Um, the the nut is one inch long, and I know that you know it can only go down to this, but that gives us a little bit of extra room in case for any reason we need to uh, face this off to get the collet to sit out a little bit more proud. So I have it marked here at one inch, and it's nothing supremely critical, so I can just do it by a scribe line, and I'm just going to take my tool here and just eyeball it up right to that scribe line that I have there. So right there looks good and then I'm gonna bring my uh, little carriage indicator up here. And we're gonna tighten it down with the wrenchy wrench. And we're just going to set zero right there. So we'll go 10 shy and then go in the extra 10 and then face out. So that's the plan. And we need to go to 50 millimeter, which is 1.969. And uh, so we're going to turn that down. So we'll get you a couple good angles on this.
Okay, so um, we have this turned down, and we wanted a uh, 50 millimeter, um, 50 millimeters 1.969, and we want a little bit of clearance for threads, so we have 1.968, uh, 1.967 and a half actually. Uh, we have a chamfer here and a chamfer here, and um, I was getting a really, really good finish, so I just made another cut here uh, to get that same finish, and that is a turn finish. This stuff turned really nice. Um, now I was just using the AI Warner um, tool holder right here with a... Um, that is a um, CCMT 3251 in there. So, now we got to come in and we have to make a um, relief groove for our threading tool, uh, which I'll do with a parting tool. So, let me get the parting tool all set up and we'll make that relief groove. Okay, so we're going to be cutting an M50 uh, by 1.5 millimeter thread. Now we need to figure out what the actual thread depth is so we can get our groove in here. So if metric threads multiply the thread depth, which is 1.5 by 0.614. So 0.614 times 1.5 is 0.921. Now that's millimeters. So we're going to convert that into inches, which ends up being 0.0363, so 36, 36 thousandths. Okay, we're going to double that because we want the actual depth. We want a groove on both sides. So that's only the single sided depth. So we're going to round that up to 40. So we're going to make a groove um, 80 thousandths deep with our grooving tool. And um, our thread will end up being 72 thousandths deep. So 36 thousandths per side. All right, And we'll fit that to the nut. So I just have a parting tool set up here. And we're going to come into this shoulder and we're going to groove in, and we're going to move over the width of the grooving tool, and we're going to groove in again. And that should give me enough to get my, um, my threading tool into that groove without hitting the shoulder. If I need it a little bit wider, um, I can do that too. It's no big, no big deal. All right. Oh, I'm just going to get all this into place. Touch, with that touch. Actually, I'm gonna slow the lathe down. gonna check that up against my threading tool and we're just gonna make it a scotch bit wider just so we don't run into that that edge OK, 
Okay, this way here, we, we're sure we got plenty of room in there, and we still have plenty of thread. And I'm actually gonna take this tool here, and all I'm doing on with this is chamfering that back side of that cut at a different angle than my threads are. Okay, all right. Now we got a setup to uh, cut metric threads and I'll show you real quick how to do that. All right, we're just gonna go over this really quick. Cell band transposing gears are very, very expensive metric transposing gears and what they have is a 100 tooth to 127 tooth compound gear for the, the reduction and the transfer to metric. Um, we can approximate that really, really easily by replacing this normal stud gear here with a 54 tooth gear and replacing this screw gear, the screw gear, the, the uh, screw cutting gearbox input gear with an 80 tooth gear. Now these gears come are standard salt bend gears. You can buy these probably 20, 30 bucks a pop. All you need is those two gears and you'll be able to cut all these common metric pitches or pretty much approximate this. Now I do have a whole video of this with the math and what it works out to and also another way of doing it. Um, if you want to take a look at that video you can see it right down there and also in the comments uh, um, in the description below. So right now I'm going to change all this out. So first thing you need to do is Move this, loosen up that, and that, okay, and loosen up the banjo here. So push that down and out of the way, that out, this comes off here. And these gears are black and oily because I use uh, a gear, uh, a wire rope and open gear lube on them. Kind of quiets them down a little bit. And of course, they don't want to come off. that with an 80 and make sure if you get an 80 tooth gear that's the one with the key not the one with the boss this gear goes back on just as a spacer washer nope and just get snug down One here comes right off. This one goes on. Also a key gear. You can find the key which is on the bottom. Right there. The washer. down. Okay, now I'm going to mesh these two gears together and you want a little bit of backlash in them so you want a little bit of space. Somewhere around there and this gets swung up here and a little bit of space here. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Tighten this down, and we'll see how it sounds. Not too bad, relatively quiet, so we're good to go. So now for this setup, we need to have our gearbox set at 32 uh, threads per inch. So on this lathe here, 32 
is C on the first tumbler and first column on the second tumbler. Now this is going to screw up our, um, our th uh, thread dial, uh, thread indicator on the carriage, so we're not going to be able to use that. We're going to have to keep the half nuts um, engaged all the time in reverse lathe back and forth. And there's also a way to do it with disengaging the half nuts. I'll show both ways. You guys can decide for yourself which way you want to use. Alright, we're getting ready to thread here and I just want to show you one of the ways to be able to thread this by disengaging the half nuts. Now because we're cutting a metric thread and our lead screw is turning at a different rate than it normally does, we can't use this thread dial indicator. It's useless to us. But you can see I put a black mark on here. So what we can do, what we need to do is when we engage the half nuts, right, we need to leave those half nuts engaged all the time. We need to come to the front, make our cut, shut off our lathe, we'll keep the half nuts engaged, and reverse our lathe back. Now, this lathe does have an instant reverse motor, so I can go from forward and slam it directly into reverse and back and forth. It's meant to do that. A lot of lathes aren't, okay? So, what you can do is make a mark. Now I made a mark on one and we're just going to do this away from our part. I'm going to come, wait for that mark to come around. All right, you can see it there. We're going to engage. We're going to make our cut. We're going to disengage our half nuts, shut our lathe off. Reverse our lathe, wait for that mark to come around, re-engage our half nuts on that line, and let it travel back to the beginning. Shut our lathe off again. Come forward, make our cut, disengage our half nuts and our and our um, pull out our tool, reverse the lathe, re-catch that number, come back to the beginning. So that way you're always, always, always engaging on that same number and you're not allowing this dial to make a full revolution. So, um, the choice is yours. Okay, so we're gonna come in here and we're gonna set up our tool like we normally would. It's gonna come into a comfortable position on our cross slide here and we're gonna set zero. Okay, we're gonna make sure we have plenty of travel. Actually, probably go in a little bit further than that. Yeah, right there. Okay. So what we're going to do is come in on the compound there. I'm going to set zero just so we know. Okay. Now, we're going to wait for that to come around. Actually, you know what? I want I want that in that direction. It's more comfortable for me. So I'm gonna retouch off. Okay, there's a touch. And we're just gonna take a small, small cut. We're gonna wait for that number to come around again. And you can go slower than this. I mean, you can go as slow as you need to. We're going to engage, there's our cut, disengage, shut off our lathe, reverse our lathe, catch that number on that black line again, let the carriage travel back to the beginning. We set our cross slide back to zero. Now I don't have a metric um, thread gauge, but I do have a digital metric caliper so we can kind of eyeball this here from groove to groove and see if we're where we need to be right there okay I just got interrupted in the middle of doing that threading but uh, we should be able to pick up right where we left off. I'm just going to 
make another pass real quick. Here, just to make sure everything lines up still. Okay, everything lined up okay, so we can start threading this. And I was just measuring this before, from groove to groove, roughly. See if we're getting 1.5, and we are, we're getting right on there. Yeah, so we're getting pretty much right around 1.5 there. It's kind of hard to get these guys in there. So we're good. Uh, so we can continue. So we're going to come back to zero. And we're going to take a cut. Get a little bit of lube going. Come back to the beginning. Going to zero. Disengage. Shut off the machine. Come back. Re-engage. Go back to zero. And take a little cut. Forward. Disengage. Shut the lathe off. Back to zero. So on, so forth, repeat.
There she be. Okay, so now we're all set to uh, test this out here. And uh, all I did is went over to the drill press and drilled a half inch hole here, uh, not all the way through, just uh, um, that's a little over half an inch deep from uh, where it meets the actual curvature of the uh, chuck body and um, it's just a regular drilled hole it's not flat bottom it doesn't really need to be and then we just um, uh, chamfer the end, end there and I just get a half inch uh, bar here to fit that now I had to turn this down just a hair to get it to fit it won't fit in that way um, also the bar is long enough to rest against the ways which you can't see it's right here so um, you can use it you know to prop it up and get a really good gronk on this and you can also use it to take to actually take the chuck off uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test our run out and uh, you know if you get bad run out or something like that then you can you know go, go back in here and massage this taper a little bit better or recut it or whatever you have to do um, that's one of the reasons why I left this uh, threaded a little bit longer so that way there if I ever did have to recut this taper for any reason I have enough room here excuse me I have enough room here to be able to just trim off the uh, the end here if this collet sinks in further than I want um, so we're gonna take that piece of uh, ground stock here and we're gonna place this into there and that into there and you can see I'm using up the whole collet and uh, I'm gonna tighten this sucker in Let's see what happens okay so that's there so now you can just rest that wrench against there and give it a little, nice little snug actually I can even go tighter than that nice little snug down And let's see here, get my indicator here, and we'll go right close to the chuck, that's probably within about a half an inch or so. Now you get the glare right on that, huh? Yeah, that's a little bit better. So we're within, we'll call that less than half a thousandth or so, or at most a half. Now we'll go somewhere uh, on over here, let's say six inches. So right there. And uh, you guys probably can't see that dial, or maybe you can, hopefully. So out in six inch land, that's only at max, that's maxing out at three, if that, a little under three. So that's pretty good. Anything out here, really, you're going to, you're going to have a, 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 a center in, which is going to keep it from, you know, doing the flopping seas on you. So uh, let me, I have a three quarter inch bar by my leg here. We'll put the larger one in there and see if we get, uh, comparable run out on that. Yeah, right, we got a piece of three quarter inch in here. Now this isn't ground stock like the other one was so that it could possibly be that the stock is out a little bit. Um, you know, but it'll give us a reasonable test. So we're within our half there and out here over at about the six inch marker as far as my camera will be able to see somewhere in that neighborhood there zero it out okay. 
and we're within about three or four there. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. Most of, I mean, most of the college stuff is going to be really, really closer to here. But uh, you know, for making it yourself and uh, not being able to grind, I mean, if you were able to accurately grind this taper, um, it'd probably be a little bit, a little bit better for you rather than you know massaging it after the fact. But uh, you know. Uh, overall, so far at least, I'm pretty pleased and, uh, you know, you get another work holding solution to add to your arsenal, uh, one that's a little bit more versatile, um, than a chuck is, and a little bit more repeatable, uh, than a chuck, I mean, obviously not a four job, but, um, you know, you'll be able to grab smaller, uh, parts easier with this, and it's a really quick setup, you know, just throw the part in there and have at it, you know, kind of crush threads if you grab by threads. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to actually using this in some projects. So, um, definitely pretty cool build. Definitely pleased with that. Like I said, I have a lot of a lot more threads here to be if I ever need to recut that taper for any reason. I can to cut and cut it down. Uh, also, this will give me a uh, a good um, uh, extra amount to be able to squish down those collets if I put an undersized piece in here too. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I really enjoyed making this. And uh, we do have some ideas for some upcoming projects. And, um, you know, I've been, when, when I'm going to go to edit this, uh, I think I'm going to split it up into a bunch of parts. I'm going to try to make each episode uh, from now on, uh, on my videos, I, I'm going to try to make them. Uh, within 25 minutes to half an hour depending I mean you know if I have two minutes extra or so that I could throw in here that's one thing uh, just on the subject um, but I think splitting them up into between 25 and 30 minutes um, will make it easier on you guys uh, just from a watching standpoint I mean I know some some people can't devote say you know 45 minutes to an hour to watch one video and are going back and forth and watching pieces um, and this is uh, this will make for a long, you know, one or two potter. So I'll probably split it up into maybe three or four of the major steps and um, do it like that. So let me, I'm going to try it on these videos and you guys let me know um, what you think about that. Uh, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.